Okay, what we have here is one more thing that they're pushing toward children. And this is a type of simple brainwashing where they want to address something as if it's just, you know, a topic of conversation. And they're also going to mislead you about what something is in a way that they're going to kind of redefine some words. So I'm letting you know what we're going to be seeing right up in the beginning. Now let's look at the names. Tom Jackson, right? So Tom is like a common type of a name. And to jack something is to hijack it, to carjack it, right? To take it over, to steal it, to seize control, right? And the bottom name, Christina Guitien, okay? So I looked at Google Translate. Guitien means kneeling and licking. That's the name. It's a Chinese word. So curious here how they, uh, you know, you all wonder if these are real names or just pin names, right? So, uh, and Christina, what's this? This is a name for Christ, right? Christian, Christina, these are names, these are Christian names. Christ is right in the name, the Latin form. And so we're going to talk about some right and wrongs with the children today. Okay, would you want nanobots in you? How do you feel about nanotechnology working inside your body? Is it okay as long as they help you? So they're see, this is the way they subtly suggest, well, what if it is to benefit you? What if it will help you? So that's going to be the purpose. This is how you simply lay an idea and you just let people naturally assume it. But if you just tell them that, then they might challenge it. They might say, well, maybe that's not the truth. And then they'll make a decision for themselves. But if you just casually mention it, this is psych this is established psychology. Uh, as long as you just casually mention it, people will just go along with it. Yeah, okay, you know, that's how it's going. Uh, would you worry that they would be put there without your knowledge or permission? So they're just, the teacher's checking now, uh, is this kid uh, informed? Because they are putting it there without your knowledge or permission, and they've been doing it for decades. But look here in the upper left here. A nanotechnology called gecko tape uses nanotubes to copy this system. Gecko tape, shoes and gloves, or even a coating on the skin, might allow you to climb walls like a gecko. Or Spider-Man, take your pick. So there's this subtle suggestion of superhero powers associated with nanotechnology. And this is no mistake, and this is absolutely not the only place where they make such a suggestion. Okay? Now, there are other stuff on this page that's going to come up later. Imagine a machine so small it could be injected into your body. This is called nanotechnology. And skipping down to the bottom, it might sound like science fiction, but nanotechnology is already a real thing. That's true. Uh, we'll have to wait for nanobots, though. That is false. They already have nanobots. Nanobots are in people. They have hybridized, hybridized versions that are created between uh, nano things like uh, hydra, and also metal things. So the bottom of the statue in Daniel was clay mixed with iron, and that's what we're seeing here. And we're going to hear them talk about the iron a little bit more in this book. Again, this is all front-loading. They're telling the kids, this is what it is, no big deal. Nanotechnology is already used in some unlikely places. Sunscreen blocks out dangerous rays using nanoscale particles of zinc or titanium oxide. So bizarre. I, I didn't know that. But yesterday I was talking to a pastor and I said, you know, 30 years ago, Holy Spirit told me that they were putting it into deodorant and lipstick. And he said, well, what about men? You know, men don't wear all this makeup. Because I'd also talked about some recent examples where I've seen verified. Um, uh, base, for example, had all of this iron in it, which is a component of the nanotech systems that they're building inside people's bodies in vivo. So it's already used. And I say, so what about men? I said, well, there are other things been put on their skin. And I said, like sunscreen. And then the very next day, boom, here comes this confirmation. Yeah, we've got it in sun sunscreen. So they're using nanoparticle, nanoscale particles of zinc or titanium oxide. Well, if you're just going to say nanotail is just an ion, so what? That's just a new word describing an old thing. But here they're telling you that's all nano stuff really is. It's just something, you know, some zinc and some, uh, some titanium oxide. But that's not true. They're also putting the titanium dioxide into Skittles, into M&Ms, into other types of uh, um, coconut flakes, right? They say, oh, it makes the coconut flakes more white. It brings out the flavor of, of the fruit flavors in Skittles, right? The artificial flavors. They're, they're deceiving you about what it really does, okay? It, it does the things they exactly said previously, well, we don't have it yet. No, they do have it, and it's doing things that they're going to try to tell you that it's not. Scratch-resistant glass is toughened with a layer of nanoscopic aluminum-rich powders, which make a rock-hard coating. 
the Romans used gold nanoparticles in their finest glassware. But of course, they didn't call themselves now technicians, but that's what they're doing. So listen, uh, no, that's, no, mixing particles, this is a thing of like just filling in voids between uh, uh, slip lines so that you can't get cracks, can't get micro cracks, which then become cracks, which then became, become failure planes in materials, okay? So yes, I took materials engineering in college. Th that's a different thing. So this is not what nanotechnology is about. Nanotechnology is not nanoscience. That's what they're trying to make it sound like. This is a deception, okay? They're being deceptive and they're intentionally misleading or else they totally don't understand what they're talking about, but I think they full well do. A lot of nanotechnology will be used to form, uh, to use a form of pure carbon, carbon called graphene, which many people have found 99.9% .9 of the contents of a specific vial of a particular thing that's been in the news everywhere lately and many people are uh, believing in and other people are not putting any trust in it. Uh, they found that it's filled with graphene, right? Graphene atoms are arranged in interconnecting hexagons that make a sheet just one atom thick. Graphene is super strong. It conducts electricity, meaning it can be used for a computer system, uh, and it can be formed into tubes and balls. So it can form tertiary shapes, not just sheets, right? The future could be made from graphene, okay? So graphene is an amazing material, but not for insertion into biological beings. And yet the Holy Spirit has shown me, uh, I'm gonna, I have a clip, I'm gonna paste it over this when I do the editing. These doctors went and um, they said, look, look, you had the stuff from the vial, let's do a scan of your hand. And they saw these nanotubes in the guy. They said, and the other two other doctors, they had not volunteered for this uh, experiment. And they said, well, let's look at our hands. And they also had these nanotubes in their hands but just far less, you know, maybe 20% of, maybe, you know, even less, a sixth, a seventh, you know, a portion of what the other guy did. But they still had it in them because, as the Holy Spirit showed me 30 years ago, they've already been putting it into personal care products, all right? So it absorbs through the skin. Here, they're, here again, they're misleading. Well, you know, okay, they can bioprint the scaffolding for a heart. They can bioprint it, and then the cells will fill it in. This is something that uh, scientists, uh, the biologists studying regeneration have learned. So this is absolutely a true thing. You can, uh, bioprinting is an amazing thing. I'm all for it, right? Printed food, I'm not for. Why? Because this gives the enemy of our souls an opportunity to control food production, which means they can then put as much nanotech into it as they want. And this is exactly their objective. The Holy Spirit has shown me this. I've discussed it in other videos. Uh, YouTube pulled it down. I got a strike for that. But it's still on my channel on BitChute. It's still on Rumble, although even Rumble now is pulling them down. But they're misleading people. Oh, it's just you know something. It's just simple. They're, they want you to think that the nanobots inside people are just another type of a coating on glass or putting gold inside an, another material to make a hybrid material, right? But that's not what it is. Now they get into the depth. Of, oh, gene therapy. So now if they let you know that it's a simple thing, been around for centuries. Right? The gene editing tech that might be used for designer babies is already being developed to save lives. So we're going to make designer babies. That's what, that's what they're just telling you. It's all cool. It's all good in the hood. Right? That's, what they're, that's what they want the, our children to think. Human consciousness is created in the brain. This is actually not true and science actually has uh, proven it. Consciousness is not in the brain. The soul is in the blood. It's in the body. Just like uh, the Bible tells us, right, we already know, if you're just reading the Bible and applying it to science, and then there was no persecution for doing that, we would already have established this. The truth is that when a decision is made, the brain actually reacts after the muscles, which shows that the decision originates somewhere else. So the mind is correlating different things, producing hormones, controlling and organizing hormones in feedback and positive and negative feedback loops, and it does a lot of different functions, but it's not the seat of consciousness, all right? This is a deception. Just like people used to think your strength was in your liver or something like this, and you kill your enemy and eat his liver and gain his strength, it's a superstition that the consciousness is in the brain. Efforts to repair the body, slowly aging or replacing our biology with cyborg machinery are all efforts to maintain consciousness. A future technology called mind uploading might take all that may, might make all that unnecessary. We could transfer a consciousness to a computer. The theme of many, many movies. 
or it could exist forever. Some say it's impossible. Others say we'll, doing it bef we'll be doing it before 2050. Who's correct? So they want you just to talk about it. Like, you know, okay, group discussion time. Break up into groups. You know, we're going to discuss it. Write a one-page essay. And you're going to get, you know, it's going to be part of your grade for the course. We want you to promote. And here's another thing that psychology has proven. If you tell the students, we want you to write. We want you to write an essay saying why this is good. If you then let that sit for three months and you interview them again three months later, now you take a poll, are you for nanotechnology or not before the class? 88% of the kids are like, absolutely not. 12% are like, we never heard of it, right? So now they've all heard of it. You poll them again three months later and 88% are for it and 12% are against. That's how it works out. They've done this experiment many, many times. All right, there was a, a campus policeman clotheslined some kid off his bike, a student, because they had said no riding bikes on campus. And this officer got sick of people flouting the rules, which were for the safety of other students, so they won't get smacked into by you know turning a corner, some guy speeding around on his bike, trying to get home to get in an extra power hour of studying or something, right? So he got tired of it. He clotheslined this kid on the main walk, and all the students were outraged. But they took a few classes and they had them write essays supporting the case from the officer's perspective. And when they polled people later, the students that had written the essays were like overwhelmingly 90% in favor of the officer's position. Like, yeah, that student shouldn't have been riding his bike and this and that, right? So this is the kind of stuff they're doing to brainwash children. And that's what this book is for. It's a basis of a tool part of the larger system that are going to deploy in classrooms to deceive children. Nanomedicine, nanomachines could carry powerful drugs into the body. This is what they're already saying, right? When people, when you start figuring out that there's nanobots going on, they're going to say, yeah, polysorbate 80 helps these things cross the, uh, the body-brain barrier. See, there's a, if you get an injection to the shoulder, whatever that is, it can't get to the brain unless it has some kind of a tool. There are certain things, especially uh, fat-soluble molecules, they can't cross certain barriers, such as the barrier that protects the nucleus of a cell, where the genes are kept. You have to have something that's going to bring it across that barrier. Uh, this uh, bordered paragraph up in the top here. Imagine a machine so small it could be injected into your body. This is nanotechnology, So, but they already told us it doesn't exist, right? Where devices are measured in nanometers, that's billionths of a meter. Such a machine, let's call it a nanobot, would be around the size of a virus, and it could travel around the body, in the blood, and go in and out of cells. It might sound like science fiction, but nanotechnology is already a real thing. Remember, earlier they said there's no such thing. We'll have to wait for nanobots, though. Okay, so now they're saying it again. So see, now they're kind of just, again, trying to say there's two different things. Nanotechnology is one thing. It's a simple thing, like the examples we gave you, just stuff, inner products, right? But proactive functioning things we don't have. That's a lie. They have it. Nanobot, they've built these things at MIT. It's, they've been around for a long time. They've been installing the subcomponents uh, and they've been uh, mixing them into, again, skincare products. And those things are absorbed through the skin and they're, they've been filling people's bodies. These heavy, heavy metals are stored in fats and whatnot. And then the Holy Spirit told me that, but one day they would, that when an activator came, those things would start to self-assemble into functioning robotic bits. Nanobots will look like this, da 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 androids, whatever, okay? They'll, they'll self-assemble, right? Exactly like the Holy Spirit showed me. Designer babies, again, just talking about like it's a thing. Okay, fillers. The shape of the lips or cheeks can be changed by pumping in liquid fillers. So now they're just talking about, okay, you know, altering people with nanotechnology. This is the idea. Altering people with nanotechnology is not a thing. It, it, it's just a thing, you know, it's a normal thing that we can do. Right? Now here's this thing with gecko feet again, right? Suggesting that you could be like Spider-Man, that you could be a superhero. This is the kind of stuff they're doing. Population control. How could we use it? Populations can grow by either new children being added or older people not dying. So if old people don't die on time, Logan's Run, for example, <laughs> reminiscent of that film series from the 70s, right? then the population is going to get out of control. Those old people need to die on time. We don't want to prolong their lives. In fact, maybe there should be a law, right? That's going to come around at some point. I don't know when, but it will. Because they're definitely front-loading the idea 
that maybe that, you know, there, this should be a topic of conversation. No, killing people should not be a topic of conversation. For the last 25 years, the number of children being born each day has not really changed, but the number of people dying per day has gone down, and so the world's population is going up. If the birth rate stays about the same, the human population will top out at around 11 billion in the second half of this century. That's actually the most honest explanation I've ever heard, that it would reach a maximum. Except what they're not telling you is that, you know, to quote Bill Gates, through the use of the medical system and abortions and quote-unquote health care, uh, we can limit the population. We can reduce it by 10 or 15 percent. Now, when they originally said, when I originally saw this years ago, he was saying, we already been doing that. And now it seems like they replaced the clip everywhere. And so he says, you know, we could do it or we will be doing it. Right. He changes the verb tense. Uh, you know, it's possible I forgot that, but I don't believe in this um, whatever effect that, oh, you just remembered it wrong. And, you know, I think that's garbage. Another deception. So I think they do completely change things. They'll erase something from the net and replace it somewhere else. I've had things deleted off my computer, like a system to make electricity from sunlight and all kinds of things have been uh, deleted off my computer. Are there too many humans? They want you to think about it because some students will say, yeah, there must be. And, you know, we've seen now clips of these teachers, all these teachers that are uh, marching with Antifa and BLM saying things like, well, we secretly teach communism to the kids when no one's listening. Really? Well, that's not good, right? So they're, they're telling the kids all kinds of things. CRISPR, now they're going to teach them some biology. CRISPR is used to, sim to modify simple organisms such as bacteria or yeast, genes from other life forms, or ones, or ones that are designed, a designed life form, right? A life form that has been modified somehow using laboratory techniques. These are the kind of things they're telling the children. This is just, uh, say, let me, you notice that, let me go back there. Notice the eyeball, all right? Notice the eyeball. The, on the cover, if you go back to the beginning of this video, you'll see on the cover, there's also an eyeball, right? Which is the eye of Horus, which is the eye of Satan, which is a symbol used by Satanists to mark their works and identify themselves to other Satanists saying, hey, this is one of our works, support it. They won't even know what the ultimate objective is, but they'll support it. Designer babies, Fighting disease, hint, hint, clue, clue, sound like anything that's going on in reality right now? Adult, this is so strange. Okay, first of all, this top paragraph up here with the turd above it, being disgusting. They say that disgust is something that you learn, but all other behaviors are actually innate. No, that's total garbage, right? There is such thing, yeah, the, there's such thing as innate and learned behaviors, but being disgusted is something automatic, like you... You can recognize a disgusting human being when they walk into the room, and you didn't learn that behavior. There's not a unique dress type, like disgusting people don't also wear, I gotta wear all black and a red top hat. No, there's no such uniform. They're not required to wear them, and they don't. But when a disgusting person comes in, your spirit recognizes their spirit as rotten to the core, and you receive it, right? And, you're like, you, and you know that about them. Now, through their slick words, sometimes they can get to override what God gave you and get through your mind and get you to trust them and then they rob you in a business deal. So again, they're just talking about this like it's a conversation. This is something that's just normal to talk about, right? And now they talk about, oh, see this again, this is getting ahead of the game here. Well, Malthus, this guy in 1798, well, he predicted that the world would run out of food because of too many people. And every two, three, ten years, some schmuck comes out and repeats the same thing. And I'm sure there's somebody saying it right now. Oh, my God, we're going to run out of uh, asparagus. We're going to run out of rice. There's not going to be enough beef for everybody, right? So they want to, and, and, and other places in this book, they're coming against beef, against cattle, uh, destroying things. All right, so here, here's the table of contents, all this different stuff they're doing. But listen, people, this is how they're trying to win this war is hearts and minds, all right? It's a psyop. This is a, psycholog a psychological operation to deceive our children, to deceive adults, and to make people think like, ah, this is just a thing. You could take it or leave it. You know, what if, what if they're putting it into you and you didn't even know, right? <laughs> this is exactly what's going on. Cyborg enhancements. That's the Borg straight out of Star Trek. All right. AI. Listen, they're going to blame things in the future on AI. When they start killing people, when the machines start killing people, they're going to blame it on AI. But the Holy Spirit told me, he showed me this is a lie. Really, it's going to be a small group of men in a remote 
location outside of any major city, somewhere in the foothills, hidden in the shadows. And they're going to be controlling those robots. But in the mainstream media, they're going to say, well, it's really just out of our control. The, the machines became aware. And go back to that thing where they say, oh, we could put a consciousness into a machine. So maybe some people think, well, maybe it was some consciousness that got into there and got out of control, right? This movie they made from an Orson Scott Card book, it was the same kind of an idea where there's this, the machine became conscious and helps um, Ender to become the greatest field commander, right? So it's everywhere. The brainwashing is everywhere. And it's subtle, but when you are bombarded with the subtlety, they, are, they easily just railroad people's thoughts what they believe, right down that broad road to hell and to accepting the beast system, and that's what they want you to do. So beware, people. With everything, the truth is you must pray. There's not a geographical location where you can run and hide. The Holy Spirit has been showing me this repeatedly, and He's telling me the safety is in the heart of Jesus. You need to stay close to Jesus. Put your trust in Him. Listen to what He's telling you. There are going to be so many lies that nobody will be able to research them all, but Jesus knows. So you need to put your trust in the Lord and keep praying. And remember, my friends, pray or be defeated.